It's good to see you today. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you had a good Lord's Day yesterday. Uh, come on with us to the book of Joshua. We're going to be thinking about Joshua today. And on Mondays, we usually look at a character from the Old Testament. And what I've been trying to do is to just kind of hit the highlights. Some individuals, we only have a, a chapter or two, or perhaps just a few verses about them. But then some of the individuals that we're thinking about, well, we have a larger body of work. And Joshua's like that. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of passages talk about Joshua, needless to say. So, not like I say a lot of times, not supposed to be an exhaustive study, but just consider a few, a few points about Joshua that hopefully help us out. And, and we'll, we'll, start with, we'll start with this. Joshua had to let the, he had to learn to let the Lord lead. And, and where that comes from, to look over in Joshua, in Joshua chapter 5, this is before, um, before Jericho. And verse 13, to just read it, it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand, and Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And so he said, No, but as the commander of the Lord, um, as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? And then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. You might think about the idea that, um, that what the commander of the Lord's army is effectively saying, um, uh, angels did not accept worship. And... Angels do not make um, do not make the ground holy, so to speak. So you might think about this being deity, as Joshua himself says. What does my Lord say to his servant? But to think about as an application, we simply say this: that what Joshua had to do was, if I can get it up there, let the Lord lead. He had to learn to let the Lord lead. He, as the battle was about to commence with Jericho. He no doubt thought of himself in his new position, we'll say, as Moses has recently passed away. Uh, he thought himself as the leader of Israel, and he needed to recognize the same thing that all need to recognize. The Lord is the, Lord is the leader. Let the Lord lead. Joshua says to the individual, are you on our side or are you on their side? And the individual says, it's the wrong question. The question is, are you on my side? you got to let the Lord lead. And when the Lord leads, the Lord gets the glory. The battle belongs to the Lord. But for us, we recognize you got to let the Lord lead. Parents don't lead in that sense. Um, parents don't lead. Bosses don't lead. We ourselves don't lead. Let the Lord lead. He has authority. His authority has been given to him. But also... Concerning Joshua, I want you to think about he had to know when to fight and when to not fight. And it's interesting to think about Joshua. One of the places we see him fighting is when Israel did battle with the Amalekites. And it's the account where Moses, um, his arms start becoming weary, and Aaron is on one side and hers on the other, and they have to lift up Moses' arms. Joshua is down in the thick of it doing, leading the battle. Again, point one, the Lord leads. But also, to just think about it, Joshua, in that sense, he's referred to a lot of ways. But there you see, he is a soldier. That's, that is at least one of the hats that Joshua wears. Do you remember when Moses is up on Mount Sinai? And the people are down at the base, and it's the golden calf incidents, incident. And the Lord has told Moses, you better get down there. And Moses goes down. Joshua is about halfway up the mount. Um, Joshua is Moses' assistant. But you remember what Joshua says? He says, it sounds like the battle of war, to paraphrase it. You might think about, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Joshua thought, oh, that, that sounds like war. It wasn't war. Um, but that's, that's who Joshua was. 
But the reason I say you have to know when to fight and when to not fight, it's because after Joshua and Caleb and the other spies came back, and the, the other spies, not Joshua and Caleb, the other spies give the bad report, and the people believe the report. And Joshua and Caleb did their best to convince the people that they could go into the promised land. The Lord would be with them. But the people did not listen to Joshua and Caleb. In fact, they tried to stone, wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. We talked about that last week when we talked about Caleb. But then there was a futile invasion attempt. When the Lord says, because of your disobedience, that whole generation of men, except for Joshua and Caleb, they're going to die. They're going to die in the wilderness. And the people lament what they have done, and they say, okay, we'll go up and we'll fight now. We'll go up and we'll do battle now. And Moses says, don't go up. The Lord is not with you. Do not go up. It is not the time for battle. The time for battle has passed. You have to know when to fight, and you have to know when to stand down. That's hard for soldiers to do. That would have been hard, perhaps, for Joshua to do. But he had to learn it. He had to learn it. We have to know when to do battle and when to stand down. We have to know when to stand our ground and when to yield. We might think about that idea. Sometimes it's hard to discern the difference between the two times, but we need to, we need to learn it. So you might think about Joshua, that he had to learn when to fight and when to not fight. There's also a time to assist and a time to step up. Again, he's, when we first meet him, he is introduced as Moses' assistant. And that's what he was. But eventually, we're going to get to a time when we look over in Deuteronomy. Over in Deuteronomy, at around chapter 3. In Deuteronomy chapter 3, a little bit later in the chapter. As Moses was forbidden to enter the land because he spoke hastily and struck the rock instead of speaking to it. Moses talks about that. Psalms talks about it as well. Deuteronomy chapter 3, 28, as verse 27, as the Lord, um, as it talks about the Lord being angry with Moses, verse 26, verse 27, go up on the top of Pisgah, lift your eyes, this is the Lord telling Moses what to do. Um, toward the north, right, go up on Pisgah, lift your eyes, and look north, south, east, behold it with your eyes. Uh, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. Moses was going to die on Pisgah. Verse 28, But command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you will see. So to think about an application for us, there's a time to assist, and there is a time to step up. And that's what Joshua did. There's a time... There's a time where you're the helper, and there's a time where you're the leader. And we recognize that. And usually it starts with more the assisting. Um, but at some point you need to step up, and you need to display leadership qualities. Whether it is with friends, whether it is with family, whether it's in the church, there's a time to assist, and there's a time to step up and take more responsibility. That's Joshua, and that helps us out a good bit. Also with Joshua, you have to be different. And I, I say always because you see it both early and later in his life. We've already mentioned one time when he was different, and that's when the spies came back. And the spies, you have ten spies all saying, oh, we can't do it. We're like little grasshoppers to them. They'll just squish us like bugs. Joshua and Caleb were different from the very beginning. They were different. Even when the congregation was defiant, they were different. And then as Joshua, as he stepped up, and of course we have the famous verse at the end of Joshua. And I wanted to go over there and I wanted to read it together. Look over in Joshua and let me, let me get over there with you. Um, look over in Joshua chapter 24. Over in Joshua chapter 24 the choose for yourselves this day passage in Joshua 24 and this is what I wanted you to say Joshua 24 verse 15 the famous verse if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve 
whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's our point. Be different. Because what I wanted you to see, to look at this passage, to look at this passage, and, and let's, just, let's just think about it. They've been there for a number of years. And yet Joshua says, if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, serve the other gods. Well, why would, why would he even say that? Why would he even, and, and I understand everybody has a choice. I understand that. But what I want you to see is the condition of Israel at this time. To look at what was happening, to look a little bit later on in the chapter, and you can read it for yourself. Um, verse 18, he talks about what the Lord had done when they came into the promised land. The Lord drove out from us all the people, including the Amorites who dwelt in the land, um, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. This, this, pardon me, this is the people answering verse 16. When they say far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods for the Lord, our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, right? We will serve the Lord for he is our God. Verse 18, verse 19, Joshua says, you cannot serve the Lord. For he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods. Verse 21, the people said to Joshua, no, but we will serve the Lord. Verse 22, Joshua says, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord for yourselves to serve him. They said, we are witnesses. Verse 23, now therefore he said, Put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to the Lord God of Israel. Put away the foreign gods which are among you. That was the condition of Israel at that time. And that's why I say Joshua was different from early and from early on until later on. He was different. When he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, he was doing something that a lot of people in Israel were not doing. They were still, for some reason, hanging on to foreign gods. They were still hanging on to idolatry. Can't explain it, don't know why. But when Joshua says, choose for yourself this day whom you'll serve, that's why he says that. Right Before he passes on, He's given it one last shot that they needed to turn from their ways. He needed, he was different early and late. And that's how we need to be. We need to be different early and we need to stay different. We need to be faithful regardless of when, where, who, what. We need to be faithful. And that's Joshua. That's Joshua. Let the Lord lead. Hope this study has been helpful for you. Hope you have a good day, and I hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word. Thanks for being with us today.